This video gives a quick introduction to diffraction gratings, including the derivation of the formula for interference maxima. Then we show a couple simple demonstrations, including one with laser light and one with white light. And finally, we wrap things up with an example of calculating the interference maxima for a couple different wavelengths of light passing through a diffraction grating. So a diffraction grating is a film with effectively thousands of slits in it. And as light passes through these gaps, each gap acts as a source of circular wavelets. So this is really an application of Huygens' principle, and I'll post a link real quick to where that was first introduced. These wavelets interfere with each other, and for whatever wavelength of light we're using, we'll see constructive interference at different angles to the screen, as we can see in our diagram here. So along this center line, we have wave crests aligned with wave crests. That means they're interfering constructively, and we'll see a bright spot on the screen in this direction. And then in this upper diagonal line, I can see that the wave crests are aligning with wave crests again for this particular angle. So when we project this onto a screen, we'll see a bright spot coming from that direction. And finally, in this bottom ray, I have wave crests aligned with wave crests again. And when I project this on the screen, I'll get a bright spot in that direction. To understand what's going on here, we have to make several diagrams and we're sort of progressively zooming in closer and closer to see what's happening. In the first diagram, I'm really zoomed out. So the diffraction grating is just this tiny little slit and I have all these rays coming through there. So that represents all the rays coming through the gaps of the diffraction grating. Rather than showing them as concentric semicircles, I'm just showing the direction of each of those sources as a ray. And those are interfering constructively at this particular angle on the screen. So I put an angle of theta here, a distance between the center line and the interference maximum of y, and the distance to the screen is d. In the second picture, we zoom in on the diffraction grating to find the conditions under which interference is constructive. And one important assumption at this point is that the angle is the same for each one of these rays. And that's a really good approximation, provided that the distance to the screen is large compared to the size of the diffraction grating. So in the little red circle in that second diagram, I drew a little perpendicular line in there to try to highlight the path length difference for two adjacent rays. The ray that's all the way at the bottom here has to travel just a little bit farther than the ray that's above it. And at the special angle for which that path length difference is equal to one wavelength for whatever wavelength of light we're using here, those rays are going to arrive in phase with each other at the screen. So being off by one wavelength puts them in phase. A crest will be lined up with a crest and a trough with a trough. So if this special angle gives a path length difference of one wavelength between two adjacent rays, well, what if I went to the third ray above the bottom? That would have a path length difference of one wavelength relative to the ray just below it. So it's going to be in phase with that. And then it would have a path length difference of two wavelengths relative to the ray that we started with at the very bottom. So it's in phase with both of those waves below it. And we can continue this reasoning all the way up the diffraction grating. At this special angle theta, where the path length difference for two adjacent slits is equal to one wavelength, every single wavelet emanating from slits in the diffraction grating is interfering constructively. As it turns out, this very strongly concentrates the light at this angle. Even a small deviation from this special angle means wavelets are arriving enough out of phase from each other to kill off the vast majority of the intensity of the light. So if we zoom in on that little reddish circle from the second diagram and really blow it up big enough to do some math, we get our third diagram. In the third diagram, I'm viewing two rays that are coming from adjacent slits. In the diffraction grating, my slit separation is labeled with a D, so that's just the slit to slit spacing. These rays are coming off at an angle of theta, again by assumption, that's an angle for an interference maximum. I've drawn the perpendicular into the diagram as a solid white line in order to measure the path length difference for these two rays. The bottom one has to travel just a little bit farther than the top one. And that's given by this little leg of a right triangle. And we also know that when the path length difference is equal to one wavelength, that's when we're going to see constructive interference. So we have to work out a little bit of trig here. That angle theta to the bright spot on the screen, it adds up to 90 degrees with this angle. So I can call that 90 minus theta. But this angle in my right triangle adds up to 90 degrees with the angle 90 minus theta. So if I'm trying to find that little angle in my right triangle, I'm just going to call it question mark for now. When I add it to the angle 90 minus theta, I get 90 degrees. 
subtract 90 from both sides, add theta to both sides. And I just figured out the angle that I want in my right triangle is actually the same as theta. So that's theta in there. Now D is the hypotenuse for that right triangle. So the path length difference then can be expressed as D sine theta. So I found a constructive interference when this condition is met. D sine theta is equal to lambda. So the path length difference between two adjacent slits is equal to one wavelength of the light that I'm using. Note that this can be generalized because if the path length difference was two lambda between two adjacent slits, then I could move one slit beyond that and I would have a path length difference of four lambda and I still get constructive interference and six lambda, eight lambda, etc. So I can have multiple locations of constructive interference. Those are given by the path length difference being an integer multiple of the wavelength of the light. Note that zero should be included as one of the values of n for this formula. If I'm talking about an angle of zero, that's the center line of my experiment. And the path length difference of light coming from adjacent slits is zero at that point. So they just all stay in phase and I'll get a bright spot right along the center. So I'm going to write n equals 0, 1, 2, and so on. You're going to see in practice one or maybe two interference maxima before you basically go off the screen. So in this slide, we're illustrating a couple different things you can do with a diffraction grating. In the first picture, I'm just shining red laser light through a diffraction grating that's 1,000 lines per millimeter. And this bright spot right here is the center line for the experiment. So that's the n equals zero maximum. And then on the left and right of the diffraction grating, I have my n equals one maxima. So you can take monochromatic light, like the light coming from a laser, and you can clearly see these diffraction grating interference maxima at rather large angles away from the center line. However, one of the most useful features of a diffraction grating is illustrated in the second picture. In the second picture, we're passing white light through a diffraction grating, and we see different angles to the constructive interference of different wavelengths in the mixture. So this violet light is coming to us from the more shallow angles through the diffraction grating. Violet light interferes constructively at shallower angles because you don't have to go as far from the center line to get a one lambda path length difference between adjacent slits. And then in here, maybe you can see some blue and then some green some yellow and orange and red. And this is the familiar Roy G. Biv, just written backwards. We're supposed to put in an I for indigo, which is basically blue. And I've separated the white light out into all of its constituent wavelengths. So when we study atomic physics, we're going to use diffraction gratings, and those are either going to be built into cheap spectroscope instruments or very expensive spectrophotometer instruments that plug into the computer to separate the wavelengths of light emitted by an excited gas. So whatever device we're using to separate the light, the diffraction grating is the piece of technology at the core of the spectrometer. So let's wrap things up with an example. In the example, I have white light passing through a diffraction grating with 500 lines per millimeter and projected onto a screen that's five meters distant. In part A, I want the distance from the center line of the diffraction pattern to where violet light is interfering constructively. And I'm saying this is 450 nanometer violet lights. So that's happening right here. In part B, we want the distance from the center line to the red light that I'm saying is 635 nanometers. So again, notice that it takes a shallower angle to get constructive interference out of a shorter wavelength light like violet because you don't have to tilt as far to get a one wavelength path length difference between adjacent slits. So I get this violet fringe coming first, and then blue, and then green, and then yellow, and then orange, and then red. Red is the longest wavelength, so I have to go to a rather steep angle to get a one wavelength path length difference between adjacent slits. So one last thing to note about the diagram before we start is that I put a little white rectangle right in the center. So you're going to see a white spot right there because the path length difference is zero no matter what the wavelength of light is. So you still have a mixture of all the wavelengths and you have white light right at the center. So for each of these questions, I'm going to apply my interference maxima formula, d sine theta equals n lambda. And these are first order maxima, so the first maximum that's off the center. So n is equal to 1. d is the slit separation from slit to slit, and that has to be measured in meters. So we have a little bit of work to do. 
we know we have 500 lines every millimeter. Well, how many meters is it between lines? So D is going to be one millimeter for every 500 lines. In other words, 0 0.001 meters for every 500 lines. And when I smash the numbers, I get 2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters per line. To streamline things a little bit, I can solve for theta in general, and then I'll just apply that to part A and part B. So first you divide by D, then you invert the sine function. So I get inverse sine of lambda over D. Now to answer part A, I have an angle to this interference of inverse sine lambda over D. My wavelength is 450 nanometers, so 450 times 10 to the negative 9. My slit separation is 2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Notice that the units of meters cancel here. And keeping three sig figs, I get 13.0 degrees for that violet fringe when I separate light through this diffraction grating. Now we were asked for the actual distance y between the center line and that interference maximum. So we're going to have to do just a little bit of trig here. If you've seen the videos on one slit and two slit diffraction patterns, we were assuming the angles were small sometimes. Well, it's usually not the case with diffraction gratings. So 13 degrees is not a small enough angle to make some of the approximations you might be used to making. So we're going to stay exact here. I have 13 degrees for the angle. I have five meters for the distance to the screen. And I'm looking for y. So I could say that tangent of 13 degrees is y over five. In other words, y is five tangent 13. And I get a distance of 1.15 meters. In part B, I want to calculate that same distance y, but for the red fringe in the pattern. Plug in the wavelength of the red light, plug in the slit spacing, and keeping three sig figs, I get 18 and a half degrees for this one. Now there's no need to draw the triangle again. I know that I'm going to get five times the tangent of 18.5 for the y value this time. And I get 1.67 meters for that red fringe. So if you're able to generate a narrow, bright white beam of light and run it through this diffraction grating, you'll project a rainbow on the wall that runs all the way from 1.15 meters off the center to 1.67 meters off the center, always starting with the violet light closest to the center line. Because again, for shorter wavelengths of light, you don't have to go to as extreme of an angle to get a one wavelength path length difference between adjacent slits. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.